to Tony Northeastern, and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. And you've had a great Christmas. Oh, and by the way, Happy New Year to you all, and thank you for joining me yet again. Um, last week we had focused on the revamp of Jarra Road due to some subsidence that was causing the wall over there to lean over. So we've had a word with the coal board and that has been fixed and the council have revamped the road so it's all hunky dory and safe for traffic. Now talking about traffic um, in the comments section in last week's video the topic of well road markings um, came back to the forefront along with the design of these traffic signals. Now, uh, I've been looking at videos and some of you have kindly sent me links to YouTube videos mainly in the Newcastle area and um, while I was watch watching the footage I was looking out for these guys um, from the 1940s and 50s. Now, 1940s and 50s they had the black and white stripes on like we have here and um, that has actually uh, spiraled into doing road signs as well which I shall show you in a minute but before they were black and white they were just plain black um, I don't know when they lost the stripes probably in the, in the 70s, 60s, 70s something like that but uh, that just well, fits in with the period that I'm trying to do. So if we just spin the camera around, I have added some road signs. Now these um, are second hand, these ones. Uh, someone had already made these. Um, I bought them at an exhibition. It was a pack of three. And um, this one, well, this is coming handy for this very low bridge here. I bet you that is roughly around about 14 feet, as it says on the sign. So I've added a sign there as well. And there was three in the pack, and there's a, there's a couple here. I'm not sure if I can use these or not, but uh, we shall see. So that's where we are. There's still more to do to the Jara Road. There's lampposts to be added, and there's a bus shelter to be added as well because I'm going to lose this um, little insert that I've put in the pavement I'm going to redo that, make that straight and put a lamp oh no, a lamp post, uh, a bus stop there um, but that's for a future project so regarding the station um, I'm pausing again because I've got to rethink on how I'm doing the canopies so this video will be focusing on a bridge so let's go and have a look we have all sorts of bridges on this layout as you can see girder plates plate bridges span bridges and you name it we've got all the bridges you can think of on this layout now I've been putting off this bridge here the reason being this is curved it's hard to tell on the camera but there is there's a curve in there where I have planned for bridges I have cut the baseboard straight this bridge here was not planned um, what I did here was I decided to add a road crossing way 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 back and um, well I put a bridge in this is one of the last bridges on this section uh, that needs to be done so we're going to focus on this bridge here now, now if you look at it from this view track view you can actually see the curves the inner curve and the outer curve so what I'm going to do I'm going to make up a cardboard template first to fit in there both sides the back and the front 
and then I'm going to work out how I'm going to do it. So let's head over to the bench. So here we are, we're back at the bench and here is the, what I'm calling now, the unplanned bridge. Um, I cut the two templates which fits in between the buttresses and um, just to get the width uh, that I need between the buttresses. So we won't be needing them anymore. So they can go in the bin. And here we have our two buttress sides. Now the narrow one, which I will mark up as inside radius, and this one has become, or will become, the outside radius. Now, I have made bridges before using this material. This is 1.5 thick plywood. Now, you can get this free of charge at Wix. Um, if they've got any, um, it's, it's quite rare stuff. They use it to protect the MDF, either on the top or on the bottom, right at the very bottom um, of the piles. And um, well, when I saw this there, I asked them if I could have it, and they said, yeah, free of charge. And um, I have, well, used this before on previous bridges, bridges um, mainly the ones at Tyne Dock. We've got two sides, inside and outside. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create something I've not done before. Normally I scribe it or... Um, stick um, coffee stirring sticks to it but no not this time this time I'm going to stick pieces of card to it because this plywood already has a natural curve in it you can flex it a little bit as you can see so that's the plan I'm going to cut strips of card and stick them onto these sides so in Viewing that, this, although it's in and that is out, this is going to be the outside of the inn, and this is going to be the inside of the outside, if you know what I mean. <laughs> A little bit confusing there. So when you look at it that way, it's going to be like that. So because this one's already got a natural curve in it, this one will probably form the same shape uh, once we start adding the card because I'm hoping the, the card um, with the PVA wood glue um, the dampness of the glue should in theory help curve it even further so we shall see let's um, draw up some plans I've got to clean these edges up first a few splinters and that so we'll clean up these edges and then we'll um, draw up some plans and this is the idea that I've come up with. Um, I've drawn it out on the side rather than drawing it out on a piece of paper and that way I can see what the proportions are to the scale. And uh, this, I think, will look okay. I think this will be it. So, we, what the idea is, I'm going to have 3mm card all the way around the four sides and a three mil piece in the middle. These two pieces of card when they're glued on will be one mil and this little space here, this two mil space there, that's going to stay bare um, without no card on that the edge there. Um, yeah and I think that will work. So what I'll do, I'll draw this one out the same and then we'll see where we go from there. Right, so I've put some 3 mil card around the edges, apart from on the lower section there where I've left the 2 mil gap. So I'm just cutting a piece now for the middle. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's different. Um, <laughs> some of you are probably thinking, oh, he's making it up as I go along. But the truth of the matter is, I am making it up as I go along. But it all depends on how it finishes and what it looks like when it's finished. If 
it looks like a Gerda bridge then happy days but we shall see so I'm just using card and PVA wood glue I don't think I mentioned before how I cut this ply I just used a Stanley knife because um, it is only a millimetre, well, 1.5 mil thick, so it, it's a couple of scores with a Stanley knife and you can snap it. So that's how I cut the, the card and the, in the um, plywood in the first place. So there you go. So that should be 75 there, 75 there, and 75 there, 75 there, there enough, 75 there. Right, I'm just using it cotton bud to wipe off any excess glue. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll add some one mil card for these two and then we'll make up some panels to go on the inside of these. With gluing in these one mil pieces of card that now finishes off the panel um, regarding adding strips of card. Now we're going to focus on the panels but before we do I'll just flip it around so you can actually see what's happening on the inside so this side here will be glued up against the baseboard um, that 12 mil gap there or space is where we actually glue it onto the baseboard so now let's focus on the panels now as a guide I've just uh, drawn diagonal lines on this card. So these are the panels themselves. They're 22mm by 22mm square for the smaller one and slightly bigger for the bigger ones uh, which is um, 24 mil. I think. So we've got 22. We should have 6 at 22 and 6 at 24. Alright, so as you can see here I have gone diagonally on one corner to one corner. Now I have seen bridges in this style where you see it from corner to corner but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to crisscross them and then cut these out and then glue them into their, into their relevant panels. So we shall see what this looks like. I'm pressing firmly down with the pen making sure that the ballpoint pen is actually um, impregnating the card as it were so I am relying on the paint to show this detail so we shall see once these are painted up and that's what it looks like with the panels in now this one's got its um, capping plate on as it were. Um, super glued that on. Uh, it's just one mil thickness card and that just puts a nice edge on the uh, bridge panel and, uh, and that's all I've got to do with this one and uh, once that's done we can paint these. Um, as you can see the, the panel is bending and that's due to the fact that this side um, has got uh, wet with the glue as it were and now and again I just tweak it a little bit just to put the bend in not much just a little bit of a, a squeeze as it were just to keep the radius going so this is just the last cap to go on I'll just put a little bit of super glue along that edge I'll just hold this piece in place first, just making sure the gap is the same either side or the overhang on the edge is the same either side and then just let that drop down and try and keep the curve that we have it's still quite flexible this plywood just leave it there for a few seconds, let that get a hold still maneuver it a little bit right. right 
Now that that's got a hold of it, it's a case of bringing the rest of that edge around. It's no super glue on that bit yet. But you can see what I'm trying to do here. Last bit of card to hold that there. There you go, it's formed the radius. There you go. Stuck, yeah, I'm happy with that. I just thought I'd show you these um, packing cases. Um, you may have caught a glimpse of them in the last video. So these are finished now, these are dried and um, these are ready to go on the layout and what I've actually done is, as you can see here, I've used uh, two matte uh, brownish paints, 63 and 94 and I've mixed it together 50-50 and then just, just sort of washed it on rather than painting on heavy, just washed it on and as you can see you've got uh, various tones of wood and it looks like wood and another thing I've done is I've added a dab of white paint there and um, once that white paint is dried I've just got the black pen, ink pen and just dabbed it so it looks like there's writing on those cases so yeah I just thought I'd show you that and uh, these are ready to go in various areas of the layout it's all about little details I have just started to add the second coat to these uh, girder plates. Um, so here we have the first coat, as you can see it's only just washed on, it more or less act as a primer. And uh, now I'm putting on the second coat. Uh, I'm not going to put it on over heavy, just because I want the pen lines to come through the paint. And I think it's working because there's one panel there, and you can still see if I just flick it from one side to another, you still see the actual pen coming through the paint. Well, the, the impression of the pen coming through the paint. So we shall see what these look like once they're done. Now that the paint has dried, it's time to weather these panels. Um, I'm just using weathering powders um, to do the weathering rather than using paints. Uh, this is on the inside of the bridge and obviously if the tracks are just about here where this brush is, the, the grime and the dirt is just going to lie on this lower edge here. So that's what I've done there and I've just a little bit here and there and across the top as well and the other side I've just well I've just put it mainly in the inside of the panels there where dirt would collect and just a little bit on the panels themselves now as you can see the imprint left by the pen has come through which is great and there's no ink there as well either so that's that's worked out quite perfectly so once these are done the next time you'll see these will be on the layout well the bridge is in place now it's just glued in place because there was such a, a snappy fit um, there's no didn't need uh, to use any pins or anything like that or any clamps so so yeah what I'm doing now is just finishing off the capping stones um, these are just lollipop sticks and coffee stirring sticks I've used these many many times before and you've probably seen me do it many many times before but I'm just using acrylic paints for this time um, I think when I've done the other 
cutting stones I used Humbrol paints but uh, I'm using acrylics this time. So this is just a uh, yellow which is just going hopefully it'll seep into the green of the wood um, and also the, the grooves that I've cut in to these um, coffee stone sticks. If I just lift the camera up you can see the grooves cut into these cupping stones. Well, the unplanned bridge that became a forgotten bridge has now been built. And uh, yeah, so that kind of finishes off the bridges from the dropping bridge all the way through to Sour Shields now. And uh, it's not a lot difference between that one, obviously that's a bolt in resin panel bridge and that one well, is a handmade bridge um, which virtually well cost us nothing really just rather the paints the glues a bit of card and a tiny bit of plywood now the good thing about that plywood was you could bend it and um, it's not often you see a curved bridge and that's kind of stuck quite well to the ND MDF um, baseball so yeah another bridge is built Now that that's done, at some point I can now ballast the tracks between the span bridge over there, the Gouda span bridge over there, all the way through to this drop bridge here, this dropping bridge. So yeah, that, that was the only reason why this section was never ballasted. But now. It can be, but that will be for another video. Now then, before we head over to St Hilda's Colliery, I thought I'd just show you of this name sign. One of you guys suggested putting a name sign in the centre of this um, mini roundabout or traffic island, so I'd like to call it now. Um, yes, so I've added all that so it's railway station pointing towards the railway station and as you can see in the background old Bert is taking his dog for a walk unbelievable eh? sign's only been out a few minutes and the dog's christening in it right let's go and see what's going on over there at the pit
As you can see, we have a new locomotive for the layout. It's the Northeastern Railway ES1 Bobo uh, electric lo locomotive. Um, produced by Helgen and supplied through Rails, Rails of Sheffield. And um, yeah, it's a, well, it's quite an iconic uh, locomotive, especially for the Northeast region. Uh, this one used to run uh, around Newcastle, but in South Shields itself, we have similar locomotives. The power pickups that run the cab here were on the well, on this area here, on the bonnet, if you like, um, because of the low tunnels. Now, if you want to know any more about that type of locomotive. There's videos of Harton Railway and showing the sister locomotives, similar in design except for where the uh, power used to be picked up from. But yeah, it's worth a look. Anyway, this one's going to take over from the D16, which used to do all the shunting for St. Hilda's Colliery just here. And um, because I bought that locomotive, I'm going to have to put up some cantonary uh, for these two rails under the bridge and over there as well. Because what's going to happen is at some point the goods yard there is going to be moved, and um, the three sidings that are there are going to be the holding sidings for the coal trucks. So that's another video and another project for another time. But in the meantime, we have to admire this locomotive. The detail is, well, second to none. Just by looking, if you we zoom in, there's a chain attached to the bogey which is attached to the buffer beam. I mean, just look at that, it's just superb. Right, so, with that in mind, I think that's all for this week. Built the bridge, added a few signs, and you've seen the new locomotives. Well, what a start to the new year. All the very best everybody. And thank you for watching. Bye for now. Bye.